drumming, there's music, there's blues, there's jazz, there's a jukebox. There's, there's this sense of joy in the midst of that sorrow and that suffering and a sense of ongoing dynamic presence. And that's really a little bit what, what this idea of survivance means. So the concept comes from a book from that title, Survivance, Narratives of Native Presence. And the idea here is that Native Americans are not defined solely by what white people have done to them. <laughs> they, they are more than a reaction to that. It's impossible to think of them in terms of what are called terminal narratives or the sort of inevitable loss of their culture or the inevitable loss of these peoples. Instead, it's important to recognize just the ongoing presence. I mean, when I teach Native American literature to my students, I always ask my students, how many Native American nations and tribes can you name? And some can get into the double digits. And then I say, well, how many federally recognized national nations and tribes are there? And they're always surprised to learn that there are over 560 in the United States alone. And so this sense of we are here we have not been wiped out. We are here. And what's also here with us is all of our culture, all of our songs, all of our histories, all of our stories. We still sing them. We still tell them. We, our culture is ongoing in the present. And so this, this idea of survivance is a combination of two words, survival and resistance. And you get both of those concepts in this poem itself. So just that framework alone gives us a whole understanding of what we're hearing in the poem. What Hello, I'm Joanne Diaz. And I'm Abram Benningen. And this is Poetry for All. In this podcast, we read a poem, discuss it, learn from it, and then read it one more time. Today, we will be discussing Joy Harjo's poem titled An American Sunrise. Abram, would you please read this poem? Yes. An American Sunrise. We were running out of breath as we ran out to meet ourselves. We were surfacing the edge of our ancestors' fights and ready to strike. It was difficult to lose days in the Indian bar if you were straight, easy if you played pool and drank to remember to forget. We made plans to be professional and did and some of us could sing when we drove to the edge of the mountains with a drum. We made sense of our beautiful crazed lives under the starry stars. Sin was invented by the Christians, as was the devil, we sang. We were the heathens, but needed to be saved from them. Thin chance. We knew we were all related in this story. A little gin will clarify the dark and make us all feel like dancing. We had something to do with the origins of blues and jazz, I argued with the music, as I filled the jukebox with dimes in June. Forty years later, and we still want justice. We are still America. We. Oh, it's so powerful to hear it aloud. That was awesome. <laughs> I bet could, you could hear the beat, couldn't yeah. you? Even as you, oh, that was great. And the music. There's so much music in this um, in this poem. So before we get into the poem and how it's working, can we talk a little bit first? Who is Joy Harjo? Why is she so important? Yes. So Joy Harjo is a member of the Muskegee Creek Nation and was named the 23rd Poet Laureate of the United States in 2019. And she is just a major writer who's, who's composed all kinds of things, children's books, a memoir called Crazy Brave, which is literally what her name Harjo means. Her honors include the prestigious Ruth Lilly Prize for Lifetime Achievement from the Poetry Foundation, the Academy of American Poets Wallace Stevens Award, a Penn USA Literary Award, two NEA fellowships, a Guggenheim, and so on and so forth. She's just, <laughs> right, like all the prizes you can win, Yes, she's, she's got them. She's won them. And just a little background on her biographical background that comes through a little bit in this poem. She grew up in poverty. She struggled with alcohol abuse herself. She's a musician who plays saxophone and flute, and she sometimes incorporates that into her readings of poetry. And then, of course, this name, Harjo, which actually comes up in the, the poem itself, Beautiful Crazed Lives. And that's, a, a I feel like, a kind of reference, a, a way to put herself in the poem since her name means crazy brave. Could we 